Number 186, 186, standing on the promises. Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ways to set his praise in his dream. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing, standing on the promises of God. We'd like to welcome everyone here this morning to the worship services here at the Finley Church of Christ, especially to our visitors. We're glad that you came our way and hope that you might join us again in the future. And we would ask you at this time to fill out one of the blue cards off the pew back in front of you and just leave it in the seat. Also, those listening by way of radio, we're glad that you're joining in this morning and hope that you might join us in person if you have the time or the opportunity in the future. Those men leading our worship today, leading our singing, Greg Wilhite, First Prayer, Eston Green, Scripture Reading, John Allen Wilson, Bringing the Sermon, James Wilmoth, one of our own. As most of you know, Dwight and Pamela are away at the Freed Hardman Lectureships. Heading the Table, Bucky Floyd, and Closing Prayer, Danny Seals. Next song is on the screen, Dare to Stand Like Joshua. As for 
557, 557, the Lord had been mindful of me. Let's all bow and pray together. Dear Holy Heavenly Father, we thank you so many, so much for all the blessings that you have given to us this past week and throughout our lives. We thank you for Jesus who gave his life upon the cross. We thank you for our jobs, our health, so many things we've got to be thankful for because of your blessings. Father, we pray that uh, you'll be with us during this service. If there's anyone here that's never named thy name, dear Father, we pray that they will today, that they'll make a decision to serve you before they leave this building today. We thank you for um, Brother Dwight and his wife. We pray that uh, you'll bless both of them as they are away, that you'll keep them safe and guard and protect them. Father, we thank you for Brother James and his ability to teach the, the Word of God. We pray that you'll give him strength today as he comes and opens the bread of life. We thank you, dear Father, for the elders here. We pray you'll bless them, lead them in a spiritual way that, that uh, the church will grow and that souls will be saved. Father, at this time, we pray for the sick of this congregation. 
Brother Harvey Klaus, Ray and Linda Daniels, Jerry Gilbreth, Carrie Jones, Janice McFerrin, Gene Weaver, and Angie Wilhite, their father. If it be thy will, we pray for a special blessing upon them that they'll be able to uh, get well soon and that they'll be able to do their wanted, wanted things in life and that you'll have, uh, they'll have your will in their life. We pray to your Father we, uh, for the work here of this congregation, for our missionaries. We pray that you'll bless our missionaries, that uh, many souls will be saved because of that. We pray for our young people, dear Father, that you'll bless them. Give them courage to always stand up and stand for thee. And not only them, dear Father, but us as we go to work every day, we pray that we'll be able to stand up against uh, people that we come in contact with. We'll be able to tell people about thy message that souls will be saved. We pray that this time, dear Father, that you forgive us from our sins. We know we sin against thee, and, and we pray that you'll help us to have the wisdom and the knowledge and the attitude to uh, do better and always ask you for forgiveness. I go with us through this service, dear Father, and be with us in all things. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Please mark your books at number 218. 218. There's a fountain free will be the song of invitation following the lesson. Our song before the lesson will be 458, 458, on and on we walk together. My Savior came walks with me because I trust his love. In all that's best in his I see it points to
Please stand for God's word. Scripture reading today will be Matthew chapter 16, verses 24 through 26. And I'll be reading from the King James Version. That's Matthew chapter 16, verses 24 through 26. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his own soul? Several years ago, I was asked to fill in at a congregation, and I had my notes out on on the kitchen table, all spread out there, trying to prepare two lessons and two lessons, and I had notes for one and notes the other. And I got up that next morning and started to preach, and I had half of one notes and half the other. I say that because you know it all happens to James. Uh, Ray Neldo and I was talking before, before services. Uh, Bobby and I were filling in for congregation in um, in Clay County and Harriman uh, up in Clay County. And uh, Bobby spoke one Sunday morning, and I, I was supposed to speak Sunday night. And there uh, at Allen's, they they told us now. And after after services here t tonight, we are renovating our building, and we're going to go. We're going to immediately after the eight, last Amen. We're going to start pulling out pews and pulling up carpet. I don't know if they told me that to, to rush me or what. But anyway, I was looking at my notes, and I had uh, had a, a lesson I was thought I was comfortable with. You know, you when you start to speak, you want to feel comfortable with what you got to say. And I was making a, a point about water baptism, and I was really hammering it down. We need to water baptism. And I looked back there, and the thing was bone dry. <laughs> It all happens to me. It bone dry. And I noticed a little boy on the front. He started giggling, and I lost it. But you know, it, it, it it's it's a pleasure to, to stand before you today. Appreciate Mike and his uh, his introduction there, and and to the visitors. I appreciate you here. And actually, the underlining things what he's what he was telling you. You'll come back next week. You'll hear a real a real preacher, and Dwight will be back with us. We we do appreciate Dwight so much. This morning in Bible class, we talked about our theme, SOS, Save One Soul, and what, how important it was that we should take the responsibility on, a, on ourselves to realize it is our responsibility to take the gospel to every dying creature, lost and dying world. We must first believe it ourselves, live it, and share it. And what a responsibility that is. Today in our lesson, I want to uh, further that point and and have the realization that we have a soul and we must handle it with care. Must handle it with care. I think about that. If you've if you seen packages, it says fragile, handle with care. Tim, I'm sure in, the, in UPS you've seen those packages and Vicki uh, carrying the mail, you've seen those packages as handle with care. Now I hope it's not like some of those commercials, Tim, that you know they, they, they drop kick the package or they, they do a a slam dunk over the fence. You know, it's kind of comical, but you know, sometimes that happens. But you know, we want to come to the realization today that we have a soul and how precious we need to handle it with care. Handle with care. These words also have an application to our soul, and our souls are far more important. Much more important. Much more important. We need to stop, just slow down. You ever get too busy, you just can't concentrate? You just going in different directions all the time and just seems like you pulled here and pulled there and pulled there. We need to slow down. Maybe just slow down and say, hey, wait a minute. There's something about this. There is a time to die and we need to be, need to be repaired. We must stop, slow down, pause our fast pace of way of life and realize our Father in Heaven gave us a soul, an internal being. It's not like they used to say, it's like uh, Rover, dead all over and it's over. No, 
No, we have a soul. It's an everlasting, eternal being. All the packages in the U.S. Postal Service, FedEx and all of those people, all those places, carriers and deliverers, it says bold letters that they say handle with care will never be as important as the thing that we possess, and that's our soul. That's our soul. Why? Because no matter what's in those packages, there will be a money value put on them. They can even insure it, a money value, and you, you can put a money value to it. Not so, not so on our soul. But what if a man gained the whole world and all his riches of the whole world and lost his soul? It's an earth shattering thought, isn't it? Earth shattering thought. It's kind of disturbing sometimes, but I, I get to thinking about as I grow older and uh, get a few years on yourself and you, 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 you think about heaven and hell and I think, what if I found myself lost? I knew better. I've been taught it all my, all my life, but I knew better. I didn't handle it right, did I? I didn't take it seriously, did I? The soul has a journey, just like that package. In Genesis chapter 35, verse 18, this is account when Rachel was pregnant and died while giving birth to uh, Benjamin. We read in verse 17, And it came to pass when she, Rachel, was in hard labor, that, that the midwife said, said to her, Fear not, thou shalt have this son also. And it came to pass, as her soul was departing, for she died, that she called his name Benami, but his father called him Benjamin. She died, and her soul departed. Had a journey. It had a journey. If the soul has a journey, where does it go? Where does it go? In Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 7, we read, Then shalt the dust return to the earth, as it was in the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. God gave us a soul, and that's where it's going to return. That's where it's going to return back to God. So we see God gave us a soul, and it will be returned, returned back to Him that gave us. When we see the words handled with care, it's proof that the object has value. It's, bring to, it's to bring everybody's attention that it handles that. Handled with care. It's got a value. We need to realize that as well. The main reason for us to handle our soul with care is its value. No price. No value can be put on it at all. It's worth more than the world. Mark chapter 8, verse 36 through 37, we read, For what uh, shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? It's worth so much that Jesus came to the world to save it. He gave up heaven. He was obedient. Luke chapter 19, verse 10 says, Christ, uh, Christ here talking, he says, For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which is lost. That, now that's our duty, to seek and to save that which is lost. We need to realize that that soul that, that we possess, that our friends possess, the person next to us possess, is lost. It's so precious that God gave His Son. You know the, you know the verse, John 3, 16. He gave His only begotten Son. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. But God com uh, commandeth His love toward us, that yet while we were yet sinners... He died for us. Christ died for us. Our soul is so valued that Christ died for it in Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 5. But he is wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And, our, and the chastisement for the peace that was upon and his stripes, we, we are healed. All we are like sheep, having gone astray, and we have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Here the Old Testament is telling us about one who took uh, the things he took upon himself for our iniquities. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3, he says, For I have delivered unto you the, the first of all, that which I also received, that how Christ died for us, and according to, to the Scriptures. Also in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 24, 
This is uh, this in reference to the count of Isaiah 53, that Christ would bear our sins in his body. The, the soul is so dear that Jesus is now preparing a place for it. He's preparing a place for it. I guess if, it, if I had, there's a favorite verse that, you know, the one we're talking about, John 14. That verse is, is came dear to me. I, I worked at the car dealership, as many of you knew. knew and, and years ago, years ago, as a salesman, uh, he was a member of the church, and, you know, he, he could tell old James when he's having a bad day. And he had a testament on his on his desk there. I'd pass his desk and he'd flip that over there. He said, Remember, remember. And we started we started quoting that, John 14. Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there you may be also. Favorite verse of mine. Christ is knew the value of the soul, and He's gone to to prepare a place for it. Handle with care indicates the object can be damaged or destroyed. You ever thought about that? It's not just idle words that they posted on there to keep Tim from drop kicking it across the fence. It has a value. It can be damaged. The soul may be lost without sin. Isaiah chapter fifty nine and verse two. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins hid His face from you that you will not hear. John chapter 8, verse 21, we read, Jesus says, I go my way, and you shall seek me, and you shall die in your sins. Whither I go, you cannot come. These verses show that by not handling the soul with care, the soul can be eternally lost. It's it's sad to it's sad to realize, but the majority will be lost. Matthew chapter seven verse thirteen says, "Enter ye into the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go therein at thereat, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leadeth to life, and few there be that find it. Many will be lost. The majority will be lost." Matthew chapter 25, verse 41. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye that are ye cursed and everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Many will be lost. The majority will find that broad way. Revelation chapter 20, verse 15. And, and whosoever shall not, uh, not be found written in the book of life shall be cast into the lake of fire. Important to handle the soul with care, realizing what a precious thing it is. Handle with care are words of caution. When you see that, you just take special care. Take special care with that package. We should be cautious in handling the Word of God. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of God. We should use caution in believing teachers and preachers. You think, what now? We need to rightly divide the Word of truth. Not because we have confidence in the preacher. We need to follow along. Is what he's saying? Is that, is that what it really says? You ever seen a dog sometimes? You, you might hear something, he goes, huh? Turn that head, you know, kind of talk to that. You know, maybe you heard something that was off color. It just didn't sound right. Not because, not because Dwight's standing here or, or whoever the preacher might be standing here preaches that. You need to study. You need to go back and study. Is that what, did I understand? Show, rightly dividing the word of truth. First John chapter 4 and verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit. But try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone into the world. You know, false prophets, they're not just going to just blatantly teach it. They're going to get your attention. They're going to tickle your ears. They're going to make you feel good. And then start preaching error. We ought to be cautious in our, in our living. 
Matthew chapter 26 and verse 41. Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. You know, we have a desire. We have a desire sometimes to teach others. Our flesh is weak. You ever, you ever got a round to it? I'm going to teach. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to get around to it. Sadly to say, you know, it's sad, but sometimes Vicky and I will say, well, we need to visit so-and-so. When we get around to it, then all of a sudden it's too late. Brother, we need to realize that we have a soul and we must handle it with care today while we have the time and opportunity before it's too late. Be cautious in our living. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12, Wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. Not going to happen to me. No. I think Peter would be a great example right there, wouldn't it? Peter was strong, but he was weak. He said, I'm going to die for you. No, I'm not, no, I'm not going to deny you three times, Lord. No. Pulled out his sword, was going to protect the Lord. Paul said, To him that thinketh he standeth, take heed lest he fall. We need to realize our shortcomings. We need to realize that we have a soul. We need to realize how precious it is. We, we must realize we need to prepare that place. In spite of the values of the soul, many are unconcerned about it. It's, that, that, sometimes it's hard to fathom, but people are just not concerned. We have brethren today that know they need to be in this assembly today, but this, I'm not talking about those that are sick and can't make it. I'm talking about those, those people that just just not concerned. They're not here. Maybe that's where we need to start, church, right here at home. What about that person that's sitting next to you? That hmm, where's he been? About every elders meeting, we we have we we have a discussion. Where's so and so? Hadn't seen him in a, in a week week or so. We need we need we need to reach out to those folks. Maybe we need to reach out to those folks. And say, hey, we're concerned for you. That that person has a soul. Where you been? You know, <laughs> we're often sometimes we're, we're kind of reluctant to say someone who might hurt their feelings. So what? So what if we hurt their feelings when we show a genuine concern about their soul salvation? So what? I love you. I'm concerned about you. Concerned about your soul. We need to handle it right. A few, a few years ago, I'm told P P Professor M. Brewster Smith. How would you like to be tagged with that name? M. Brewster Smith. Mother didn't like him, did it? M. Brewster Smith, who was the Department of Psychology of, uh, of Varsal College, made a survey of personal values. Now, this is several years ago, and I, I'd say it could probably stand true today. It was published in the, the Journal of, of Psychology. No, I didn't read it. I was told about it. <laughs> it was published in the Journal of Psychology. He chose a, a typical city of about 160,000 people. Selected a cross-section of the population, he asked these questions. Number, uh, he said, from your experience, number one, what would you say is the most important thing to you? Imagine what they said. Imagine how many different answers he said they had. Number two, he asked, what sort of things mean the most to you? I wonder how many hobbies was mentioned. Playing golf, fishing, hunting, you know. I wonder how many different answers they had. Number three, he said, what things are the most are you most interested in? I wonder how many different answers he had. I can, I can only imagine. Ask 10 people, get 10 different answers? Probably so. What things do you care about the most? I wonder what kind of answers they had. Let me share some. 56% stated economic security. Now what is that? Economic security. 56%. Several years ago this was made, but you know, we would have some, some folks that want to be politically correct that would say, I want economic security. Okay. 46 stated home and family life. That's great. That's important. I like that. Home and family life. 
25% stated liberty and freedom. That's good. It's real good. 13% uh, 13 stated world peace. Has the world ever known peace? It's good to pray for it. It's good to pray for it. It's good that, that we could pray that, that, that there'll be peace, that, that, that the gospel can go to the world and, and we can send people or we can teach people. I pray that we someday can realize that. 10% stated education is the most important thing to them. Education. 8% sad. 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 8% stated religion. Quote, big broad topic. 8% stated religion. That that was important to them. Does that 8% realize that they have a soul? Or that other 92% or whatever percentage it would, might be? 4% stated decency and morality. And 2% stated being a good citizen. I'm sure, as I said, I don't know exactly when this was done, but I'm sure if, if it's stated again and the, and the same things were asked, we'd get similar answers. The point is, is that they're not realizing they have a soul. They're not realizing someday they've got to give account of how they handled that soul. They need to, need to realize how important it is, how extremely important it is about this soul. The cold, hard facts is that most people want material security more than they want God and liberty. We can see that just, just looking out this door right now. Cars going up and down the road. If it's a little bit warmer, maybe bass boats going up and down the road. I don't understand it, but they, they coaches, uh, ball teams, they, they schedule basketball on, on Sunday night, Wednesday night. Don't understand it. Just tells, you, tells me that the priority is in the wrong place, don't it? You know, it's it's a year, year of politics. Politicians have taken note of this too, haven't they? Promising more and more of less. You know? Promising you everything. How much do they deliver? They need to realize God gave us a soul. And we're going to be accountable for it. In a sermon against materialism, Christ said in, in Luke chapter 12, verse 15, Take heed and beware of covetous, for a man's life consists, consists not in abundance of the things which he possesses. It don't matter how much stuff, how big a car, how big a house, how big a piece of property you've got, what good job you've got, what education you've got, what you don't have is God to lose your own soul and lose your own soul. I think of verse of Matthew, cha uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Seek first the kingdom of God. There's many of not going to do that tonight, you know it? Super Bowl Sunday. Super Bowl Sunday. There's many not going to seek God first tonight. Sad to say, they're not going to be here. If they could just realize before that first kickoff, the first, before that first touchdown is made, they might meet, meet God in judgment. Might die. And they got to give account of that soul. Kind of bleak when you think about it, but it's true. It's very true. Most people's philosophy of life is summed up by Luke chapter 12 and verse 19. And I will say to my soul, soul, Thou hast much goods laid up for me many years. Take, eat, take thine ease. Eat, drink, and be merry. Got it made. Got it made. Got a good job. Got my house. Got my house. Got my wife. Got my grandkids. Got it made. Eat, drink, and be merry. Got it made. I was told one time of a story of an elderly man realized he was on his deathbed. 
He was on his deathbed, and he called his two sons in there. One was a member of the church, and one was not. And he asked the younger one, he said, Son, about a ninth grader, I, I think his story was told. He said, Son, what, what are you going to do? After high school, teenager said, well, uh, you, <laughs> you know, he's kind of lost words. He said, well, I, I guess I'll go to college. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm going to do, God. Uh, there, Dad, uh, I guess I'm going to college. I guess that's what Dad wanted to hear, so that's what he's going to tell him, you know. Your heart bleeds with sorrow. Remember, Christ wept too. In sorrow. Remember Lazarus? Lazarus dying. Maybe he had the feeling that I should have been there. There for his family. Good intentions. He had no financial security. Christ knows that. He didn't have a bed to lay his head on. Maybe you're caught up in labor, labor disputes. I should make fun of it. Isn't this Joseph, the carpenter's son? The little of being a carpenter's son. Maybe, maybe you had friends forsake you. They forsake Jesus. Matthew chapter 26, verse 56. And all his disciples forsook him. This is the account of when Jesus was betrayed by Judas. Are you tempted to give up the struggle of truth against error? If so, think of Christ and his stand. 
Matthew chapter 23 here, Christ told the scribes of Pharisees, ye fools and blind and hypocrites. In short, he said, Jesus don't have your priorities right. Your priorities are all messed up. Have your enemies mistreated you? Remember, the more false witnesses of Christ. People have failed to appreciate you, if so, remember Christ. We need to now realize how much more important to handle a, handle a riot or handle your soul must be. We have to give, a, give an account. God gave his son for your soul. Christ gave his life. God gave us a way of escape, the plan of salvation. We must handle it with care. It will be, it will be an eternally, it will, it will be an eternally in glory, eternally lost. In closing, what is the date? What is the date? For the last lesson you heard. Alarming, isn't it? Alarming. We have a soul. We need to handle it with care. Today, if you haven't handled your soul with care, there's things in your life that separate you from God. Come forward. Let us pray for you. If you haven't handled your soul right, you haven't have a name, Christ as, your, as, as the Savior, accepted His plea, His pardon, His salvation. If you're subject today, you need to wait. Please come as we gather and stand and sing.